What's up, Heat Nation? Welcome back to another episode of the Miami Heat Roundtable. This is going to be episode three. So I am back here today with Ernest. You can find him at Miami Heat Talk. And I'm here with Trent. You can find him at Miami Heat Network. So excited that we're going to start doing this again more on a weekly basis. We've done two of these videos now. So we want to continue to do this. And we're going to call it the Miami Heat Roundtable. So we want to talk about a few things today specifically. So let's talk ball, y'all. Let's get it. So let's go. Off we go on another Miami Heat adventure. Let's roll. Yes, sir. So last night, interesting game, huh, fellas? So the Miami Heat beat the Brooklyn Nets on the road 96 to 95 in a dirty, awful, like offensive game. This was a game that was in the mud, which the Miami Heat are good at, right? They're we're good at yep. this games apparently but this was like an old school 90s game where like it was all about the defense but also just the inability to score like can you imagine in this day and age this type of basketball the heat played an overtime game the first of the year we're one and oh which is good but we couldn't even break 100 points so ugly game but also ultimately beautiful because all that matters is that we won right so it's frustrating but a win's a win so interesting to hear your guys's uh Thoughts on last night's game. So the Heat basically scored 31 points in the first half. Unreal. Luka Doncic in the last month has probably scored that in a half two to three times. I've seen that recently. So 31 points in the first half, 37 in the third quarter. That was actually our, our golden quarter. They had 37 <laughs> in the third quarter alone. So like this game was wild, went to overtime. Crazy game, shot like shit. But Ernest, just let me know what your thoughts on the game was last night. Awesome, awesome. Because it, it doesn't only show the fact that we have the will to win. It shows what we've been seeing all along. Is that even when we're down, even when we're injured, even when we're hampered, we still find a way to win. You know, when you say injured and hampered, well, Jimmy played. Yeah, but our star for the season, Jaime Jaquez, was out. You know, Kevin Love was out. So they're always finding ways to win. Uh, and it's like you said, it was like a 90 style game. This was very defensive minded. There was a lot of reasons why we should have lost. You only get 18 points from your bench. Um, but we find a way to win. You know, even though we're down by five with a minute left, we still find a way to win. We're down by 16 in the second quarter. We still find a way to win. You know, and that shows me why I feel this team is a contender because of games like this, which we normally lose, we're turning around and winning them. Yeah, I mean, these type of games for the Miami Heat, it's a like, let's talk about the first half real quick, right? Um, that was embarrassing, right? It was just embarrassing. And, it, and, it, and this is why it brings to my point of our first episode when I said we lost the championship because we just could, we didn't have enough scores on our roster at, at the end of the day, right? And these are one of these games where um, Amir literally said we had 31 points in two quarters. You know how embarrassing that is? That's embarrassing. At the end of the day, we got the W, of course, but I'm yep. always going to criticize my team because I'm not going to always be positive. Oh, like, yeah, we got the dub. There's a, we, there's a lot of work we got to do, right? Yep. Um, but, but 31 points, like I said, is just unacceptable. And this is why y'all, I'm on this channel or what this Miami Heat round table, I'm going to be the one with Tyler Arrow. Where was he until the end? Like, yeah, he he, he stepped up. He those uh, back-to-back threes and stuff like that, hit that clutch shot to bring us down and stuff like that. We get that. But in that first half, the, the inconsistencies to me is just – it's it's right there. We're looking right at it. And it, it, it's so frustrated to me because this is constantly going to happen. I bet you next game he's going to go for 10 points and the next game he's going to go for 50. That's just what Tyler Hero does. Like, this is – that's it, 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 inconsistencies. But – I more on the positive side, we see Jimmy's first game back, and he looks incredible, right? He got some time off, um, put up some big numbers in 40 minutes. 40 minutes coming off injury, you expect a little bit less minutes, but we need him out there, right? 31 points, four assists, and five rebounds. So I'm definitely yep. excited about that. And we, we talk about this all the time. When Jimmy's out there and he actually wants to play, who can really stop him? I don't know if y'all have noticed. Have y'all seen, like, the all-star votes and stuff like that? I think yeah. I, sent it to, I think I sent it to y'all. And I said... Why the hell is Jimmy in like top four, top five voting? He hardly played, and when he does play, you know he's not really doing like to be in a in those votes. Don't get me wrong; I think he should be an All Star game, or maybe not. I don't know what y'all think, but that just shows. You know, it's like I don't know. Um, he, it, yeah, yeah. 
No, I mean, he he gets those votes, bro, because he's that popular. Like, what he yeah. did in the finals, what he's done in the playoffs, he gets those votes because just people are naturally drawn to him. Like, these are fans' votes. So, and he has the respect. Like, what yeah. he's done the last few years with this team, he's gotten the respect of the people. That's why I think the votes are there. For sure. So, looking at this team, right, we shot 8 for 31 at the three-point line. That is 25, 26%. That's not yeah. pretty good, right? At the free throw line, though, we was pretty solid, right? 22 for 25, 88% as a team. Um, and so, like you said, these are one of these games where we, we thugged it out. We got the dub. We got the victory by one point. And these games matter because how close Eastern Conference is right now, we need these games. And I'm, what's our what's our um, record against the Nets right now? Because I know we played them four times. Two and yeah, two. Yeah, I know you top your head. Two and two. Two and two, right? So if we would have lost this game and somehow the Nets come back, like remember last year, they were super, super, they were in our way. The Nets were in our way last year. So we, and even though the Nets are, you know, they have not the greatest record this year, but they can always turn around. Look at the Utah Jazz. I mean, I think they're 12 and two in their last 14 games. I know that's in the West, but teams turn it around. So this was a big W, especially um, seating wise um, record. Uh, at least we tied it with them. And um, my last thing I got to say about this Heat team, man, is that Kyle Lowry is fucking garbage. I'm sick and tired of this dude, so I don't mean to swear. Um, but I can't stand Kyle Lowry. I actually made a video on it, and I'm hoping it's true. He's on an expiring deal. Expiring deals mean a lot during this time. We can get something good out of this because a lot of teams want to free up cap on their end. So hopefully yeah. we get the fuck out of here. And another player who we're going to talk about buyout um, candidates later in the video Get Thomas Bryant off my team. Get him off my team. Get him out. I don't want him no more. And I know a perfect player who can replace him. And it's not the same position. But at the end of the day, good W. It, I mean, it, it's crazy because I remember Thomas Bryant, a lot of people were looking at him as like the revelation, the backup center revelation. Like he's so much better than Deadman. He's so much better than Cody Zeller. And that was in the preseason. And then people just figured it out. You know, he's trash on defense. Um, he's not as great as people are saying. There's a reason why he was traded from the Lakers. There was a reason why he wasn't brought back by the Nuggets. Um, I'm thinking that he's just, okay, a big guy. He has six fouls. Go, get him. But, you know, you think he could be better? He's not. But, you know, we have the revelation in the backup center in Kevin Love. I think Kevin Love is fine as the backup five, but we still have that hole. Like I still, I feel, st I still feel that we have that hole at the four. Like we've been starting Nikola Jovic the last six games. He gives you five points, nineteen minutes. I think he's doing fine. It's a nice little band aid uh, for the position right now. But in the playoffs, we need to decide what are we going to do. Is it Haywood Highsmith? Is it Caleb Martin? Is it Nikola Jovic? I don't think any of the three are the answer. Caleb Martin's the best option, but if we really want to win a championship, it's what what are we going to do there? Who's going to fill that hole? It depends on the matchup, though, as you've mentioned, because we're the deepest team in the NBA as long as we're healthy and have access to these types of players. It depends on who we're matching up against. Like against the Nets last night, they have a small um, lineup as well, right? Claxton's like kind of like bam, undersized center, 6'9", 6'10", and then they're playing Finney Smith and Bridges and uh, – Cam Johnson and all those good dudes. Like, what's his name? Uh, what's the dude off the bench who played like shit last night? Not Cam Johnson, but Cam Tom Tom Thomas. Is it? I don't know. I, I, they, they be starting him and then benching him, so it's weird. Cam Thomas. I know yeah. Cam Thomas. Yeah, yeah, Cam Thomas. Yeah, Cam yeah. Thomas. So they, they play other size too. So like, it depends on, on who we're matched up with against. Um, but yeah, to your point, like Jovic. He's fine. I'm happy he's in the rotation, getting some experience, but he's still raw. He's going to be inconsistent. You know, he's going to have a game where he's getting 15, 8, and 5, and he's going to have a game like last night where he only, you know, has a few points. But the playmaking's there. The speed of the game is slowing down slightly for him. He's turning over the ball less. So he's good. But in the come playoff time, he's not going to be an answer to your point. And Kayla Martin, yeah. Haywood Highsmith, good. Um, Swiss, Ar Swiss Army Knife type dudes, but they're 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, and, you know, we don't want to get pounded on by the teams that are bigger. Like, even in the East, like if we play like the Cavs when Mobley comes back and they have Allen, um, Milwaukee has a bigger front court with um, Giannis and Brooke Lopez, Boston with Horford and K like KP. Like, so you're right, man. We need to figure out like who's going to be like that starting power forward or even backup power forward yeah. that can come in. So um, I want to I want to say something, right? I think I think I, I brought this up last episode. You wasn't here, um, Ernest. I'm willing to trade Caleb Martin. I'm actually willing to trade that dude. And and the reason why I'm willing to trade him, it depends. I'm not willing to trade him just to trade him. 
no, I'm not willing to do that. But if we have to package him into a deal to get us a better team and us a star player, I'm willing to do it. Um, mm -hmm. Because our mayor brought up a good point. We're not extending him at all. Um, I don't think we're doing that, right? So let's just try to get something out of it. Um, Caleb, we all know what Caleb, man. He he outplayed Jalen Brown in the playoffs this year, unfortunately, um, dealing with injuries and stuff like that. He's still a good player. But if we have to give him up, you know, during the offseason, people are like, he's untouchable. We can't give him up. We can't give him up. Right now, if, if we have to give him up for Donovan Mitchell, I'm for it. <laughs> so I'm willing to do that. I think we still got, like you said, Haywood. I, I, I want to play Haywood Highsmith a lot more. I don't care. I get it. Plus minus is, is um it's important. I mean, you you can't just be out there getting plus minus 30 and you're just making your team lose out there, making your team worse. Um, But I like him. I personally like him. He's a little bit smaller body, but he's improving every day. And so if we can get a star player out of this, I'm willing to trade Caleb Martin. I've said this so many times. I've just said it in my channel. Yep. I think I've even told you guys. Uh, I'm at a point right now where I don't think we need to make a trade. I love this roster as is, but I'm a realist. I understand where we have holes. I know the starting power forward position is shaky. I know the point guard situation is raw. I think Donovan Mitchell is the guy. It's the home run hit to make a trade for. I just don't think it's going to happen this year. Cleveland, they're tied for fourth. I don't think they're going to make a trade. If it happens, it's because it happens in the offseason or because Donovan requests a trade. But the tradable contracts that we have and the players that I'd be willing to give up for to make an in-season trade, to not make a home run hit, but to get someone who's really going to help us, Kyle Lowry, who's expiring, Caleb Martin, who's expiring, a young asset like Nikola Jovic, which is the reason why I feel like he's playing to bark up his trade value, maybe a future first pick swap, something like that. Those are players that I'm willing to trade right now, right now, this season, to get us a player to help us win. Am I saying we can get a Donovan Mitchell with that trade? Absolutely not, because Cleveland's going to want Tyler Hero. And if that's, a, if that's a possibility, you do it for a Donovan Mitchell. But it's mm -hmm. like I mentioned the last time we did this, you guys, DeJounte Murray is perfect is the perfect option for us to make a trade for a Kyle Lowry and a Caleb Martin. If we're able to swing that, you know, it's not likely you got to make the numbers work. Andy Ellsberg is the great numbers guy, but those are three players that we have that I'd be willing to trade. I don't want to trade Bam. I don't want to trade Jimmy. I don't want to trade Hawkes. I don't want to trade hero. If we don't have to, like yeah. I've told you before, like Trent, me and Trent are on the same page. If it's getting Donovan Mitchell trade hero, but if you have to trade hero for the John Murray, I, I wouldn't do that. I don't see a point. There, there's not a real upgrade there. So it's really depending on the right piece, I feel. Yep, and we also mentioned this too, the last video when you weren't here, Ernest, that I don't think the Hawks would want, if they're trying to gut their roster, get rid of DeAndre Hunter, Capella, Bogdanovich, Murray, and keep only Johnson and, and Trey Young, then they wouldn't take Tyler anyway because he's getting they're, they're getting the same contract back roughly for DeJounte. So exactly. uh, I think they want to experiment with, people at different positions and let yeah. be the star in the backcourt. But let me ask you this real quick though. So I'm going to name a few players and one Murray is one, of course, another player, Terry Rozier. Let's just start off with those two guys. So initially, if we're going to have to trade for them, because those guys both signed big extensions. Um, I think Rozier has like two or three years left on his like hundred million dollar deal or so making 25 mil. Um, would you be willing to trade Jovic at, at any of those deals as the sweetener to get either one of them? Because right now, um, it has Kyle, a Caleb, I don't know if a pick's going to be involved, but if they're asking for a young piece. But actually, I have this note. Let me actually I, – I just saw that the Hawks have said for Murray – I've seen two reports. So one is either a young, good type of player, up and coming type of player, like a Hawkes, let's say, which we're not going to do, and a first round pick, or just two first round picks and whatever that can match the salary. So what are your thoughts? Would you be willing to trade like Jovic as that young piece, or would you be willing to give up like the two first rounders? Go ahead, Trent. Um so personally, what I'm looking at for Miami. At this point, I'm willing to trade Jovic. I mean, I've been willing to trade him. I, I, you know what it is? I give up on young players too quick, and that's a problem with me. And I, I'm just going to bring this up real quick. I was one of LaMelo Ball's biggest haters, and now look at him. Look at him. 
He's a baller. He's a he's a really really good player. So I always I'm always gonna regret this. But if <laughs> my problem is if I don't see you providing for our team as soon as possible, like um, uh, Amy, Amy, whatever his damn name is, I can never pronounce it. I, I mean. want you. Yeah, I don't want you on my team. Unfortunately, that's just kind of how I look at it. I know it's not the right way at all. I really know because it takes time for developing these players and stuff like that. I just look at Jimmy Butler's time. I look at he's getting older, and I want to win a championship in his era, right? That's that's what I want. So I'll do whatever it takes. If we have to give up Jovic, I'm willing to do that. Um, so a player that I would want to do this with, if we're gonna get Dejounte Murray, right? They're looking to package a deal. I don't know if you said this, but they're looking to package him with somebody. A player that I'm looking at is DeAndre Hunter. DeAndre Hunter is 6'8". Um, he hasn't played um, much this year, but he's a 6'8". He's averaging 15 points a game, shooting 40% from the three-point line. If we could package him and Murray together, I would be super, super excited because he's known as a 3 and D guy. He just has health problems. That's his thing. And that's a big thing. I know we already have enough health problems with the Miami Heat. We already got enough. But bringing those two guys in, I would honestly love that. Um, and I think DeJounte Murray is going to go for cheap. I, I really, really do think he's going to go for cheap. Um, hopefully the Lakers don't get it because the Lakers are actually in talks for him right now. So that is a little bit concerning to me. Um, yeah, they want Reeves, though. I don't know if they're willing to, to give up Reeves, but fuck Reeves. I'd give up Reeves for DeJounte Murray in a heartbeat. But, so yeah, I, I like, yeah, I like the Hunter piece, too, because yeah. two years ago, remember against the Hawks' first round? Like, DeAndre yeah. Hunter had some games, man. Like, yeah. he busted us up. Right. Right. Yeah, so so that, that actually works. <clears throat> I'm looking at the numbers right now. DeJounte Murray, his contract goes up next season. It's similar to the Tyler Hero, but he's making 18 mil this year. With the, the, the DeAndre Hunter's 20. That's 38 million. Kyle Lowry makes 30. Caleb Martin makes six and a half, seven. And seven. Yep. And Jovic is like at two. So all we need to, that actually works. You just grab a salary filler from Atlanta. I don't care who, take one of these Chuma, Chumanacos and then just release them, whatever. And you make the trade work. Miami's probably going to have to throw in a future first round pick, maybe a pick swap. So technically, that's two first round picks. You got the pick, and then you got Jovic. They have Jovic to build for the future. Jovic is a piece. That's the reason why the Heat are playing him. They're playing him so teams can see what he can do to bring up his trade value. When a team is blowing up, they want three things they want expiring contracts to fill up the void, they want a young asset, and they want draft picks. Miami can give them all three. And the reason why I feel the three of us keep kind of surrounding around the Hawks, like vulture swinging down, ready to just pounce and kill, it's because we know that Atlanta is basically quitting. And at this point, that's where Miami, Miami, they're terrible sellers, but they're great buyers. And if the Atlanta, which they are, they're showing that they're just willing to give up the farm then you go in. You go in for a team like this. That's why Spider, this, right now, the uh, the Donovan Mitchell situation, it's not going to work. Because if Cleveland were losing a bunch of games and Mobley and Garland were out, then yeah, Miami can swoop in, make a deal for Mitchell, and get this done. But the fact that they're winning, it ain't going to work. But with DeJounte Murray, with this situation, I think that one's more likable. So hell yeah, I'm so willing to give up Jovic. And it's not because by giving up Jovic, we're messing up our future. We have so many building blocks for the future that I feel we can afford to lose Jovic. You got Bam, you got Tyler, you got Hawkes, you got Highsmith, you got so many. And let's not forget what we have over there in the G League with Swider, with Williams, then we got Orlando Robinson, Jamal Kane. Our future is fine. So if we give up one of those pieces in Jovic, I'd love to keep Jovic, but if you're asking me to give up Jovic to get a DeJounte Murray and not have to give up Tyler Hero, all in, Papitos. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, man, I agree because also if we do the make that trade, then how old is DeJounte Murray? 27? He's like – or 28? He's like in the same build then with Bam, Tyler, and Hawkeyes, right? So that's, exactly. That's the so, new core four right there. Would y'all? So I like DeAndre Hunter, but I'm just looking at this, this Atlanta Hawks team. This team's actually really bad. I see why they want to blow it up. But um, would you take a, a Sadiq Bay or a Sadiq yeah. Bay or what? I don't know if he would no. be available. Sure, bro. I'll take any of those players. If I'm getting Dejounte Murray and DeAndre Hunter, you can give me Garrison Matthews. I don't care. Like so, whatever. Look at this one. I'm not sure if they're willing to give this dude up because he's still young. Aneka Okongu, 
we talk about the power forward position. I know he's not a he's a floor spacer, but he could play that four and is a big body and is a lob threat. I know we don't really have a guard to throw much lobs because our fucking point guard position is pretty ass. But I definitely like him. I Just don't throwing. think so though, because they're gonna they want to get rid of Capella. You know what I mean? So like yeah. he's, he's a replacement to Capella on that yeah. team, typically, but. And plus, we need spacing around Bam, you know, like, unless he's coming off the bench. And they, they gave him a big extension. The numbers don't work because now you can't throw in Caleb Martin. Now you got to throw in Duncan Robinson if you're going to take Hunter. Because remember, Okongwu makes $8 million this year, 14 next year. So the trade package that we talked about that centered around Hunter Murray, it works exactly with the numbers with Kyle and Caleb. So now if you're going to do that trade, throw in Okongwu, now we got to talk about do you want to trade Duncan Robinson? Hell no. Like I said, if we're going to make – we don't have to make a trade. But if we're going to make one, it's because it's going to benefit us. I don't want to trade Duncan. I don't want to trade Tyler. I don't want to trade Hawkeyes. Nah. For sure. I just, I just like to – I'm just throwing – because they're, they're in a, a fire sale. So I'm just looking at their players on the team right now. Yeah. Yeah. You want to – Oh, yeah. Let's switch gears real quick because, um, Trent, you said you had a, uh, yeah. a Thomas Bryant – buyout candidate replacement in mind. So buyout market, right? So we don't want to go over the second apron necessarily with even a player like a DeJounte Murray, right? It's not necessarily guaranteed that we're willing to take on his contract. We didn't want to take on Beal's contract and players like that, that we didn't think were going to be the whale that put us over the top, like a Donovan Mitchell, Damian Lillard. Those guys were worth going over the second apron. So um, buyouts, are perfect because guys are on their last year of their contracts that are expiring and they usually yep. sign for the vets veteran like kind of like Caleb he got he signed for the vets uh men and then we you know rewarded him with a, a little higher con contract this season so um he didn't seem like he was going to pan out last year but he initially was not playing that great next to bam but in the playoffs that all changed so and he's been wonderful this year so um there's a few people that could be on the buyout market i know one specifically that i know of is a Gordon Hayward who was on a huge contract that's expiring this year and Hornets are going to be a team also like the Hawks and Wizards who might be blowing it up a little bit um so he seems expendable I don't know if there's any other candidates you think that could be a good fit but we could start with Hayward or Trent if you want to start off with like the mystery men go for it well you kind of took my name you took took my person but it's good it's good Gordon Hayward um yeah I like Gordon Hayward I really do um I get it he ain't the same person he's always injured I get it but when we're talking about buyout candidates, let's not forget, great players are not going to get bought and out. Like, that's just not the NBA. That's just not going to happen. So if we are going to let go of Thomas Bryan, who we don't really need because Kevin Love is playing that position perfectly fine, why not bring another scoring threat? We need that. I'm not saying Gordon Hayward may play a big part. When you do bio markets, it's always going to be 50-50. They can play really, really good, or they can play really, really bad. The best thing about it is we don't got to worry about it because his contract's expiring. We'll let yep. him go as soon as the season's over. So that's the point of a bio. And when Gordon Hayward's playing, he still is averaging damn near 15 points a game, shooting 36% from the three-point line. Why not? Like, why, why wouldn't we not go after that? And Gordon Hayward almost signed with us. He almost signed with us. He knows about our Heat Nation, Heat culture. He's not a great defender. We get that. Um, he's always injured, like I said. And there's a bunch of probably more cons than positives for Gordon Hayward. But you're telling me, who would you rather have, Thomas Bryant, Gordon Hayward? I'm taking Gordon Hayward any day just because of the fact that we already got the backup position and Thomas Bryant's hardly playing this year. So I would love a Gordon Hayward on my team. I wouldn't mind it. And he could be one of those dudes who surprise us. You know, injury comes down. We all know he's a, uh, he's a veteran yep. in this league. So if it, we all know injuries happen, he's a veteran in this league. He can step up and pick up right away. So I would yep. love a Gordon Hayward on my team. Um, Hornets, they're, they're they're terrible, and um, he should have been he should have been gone off that team like the last two years. Let's be honest, but you know. Yep. Do you think do you think we'll be able to attain him though? Do you think he'll see us as a good enough contender? He hasn't won a championship. There, who was that? Was it Lamarcus Aldridge a couple years ago? Like that we thought we were gonna get, and like a couple yeah. other buyout candidates, like the Kevin Loves that we thought we were gonna get to help would help move the needle, but they signed somewhere else ultimately. Um, do you think like I think on the Nuggets? Can you imagine the Nuggets signing him, dude? That'd be a dope signing for them. The Celtics, yeah. I think uh, Ernest mentioned in in a video today, they have Brad Stevens, his old coach from college. 
And in the NBA, he played there and unfortunately broke his leg on the first play of the game that yeah. season. But like Boston is a better contender in a sense. Like they like it makes more sense that he can come to Boston. He'll be the anchor off the bench. Or if a uh, Nuggets, like on the Nuggets, he'd start. Like he'd be on. Like imagine him playing with Jovic, one of the best players in the NBA. Like it's hard to compete with those guys. So do you think we have a chance, even? I think we have a chance. I don't think it's likely. Um, just for all that that you said, Miami, it's not is not going to give him the same opportunities that these other teams are going to give him because we have so many wing players. So if you bring in Gordon Hayward, it's like okay, now you got to share time with Jimmy, jo- Josh Richardson. Jaime Hawkes, Caleb Martin, Duncan Robinson. So he's going to be the sixth wing player. He might start some games. He may come off the bench. Boston is the perfect fit. But he's going to go to Boston. If yep. he gets bought out, he's going to go to Boston. It's just writing's on the wall. I, I agree with y'all. And, and this is mean. This is kind of messed up on my end. But th- maybe he looks at our team like, bro, this team's always injured. Like, let's just be honest. This team's always yeah. injured. So, like, yeah, Boston may be a good fit, but if we're going to talk about playing time, I promise you when the playoffs start on the Celtics, Gordon Hayward's not playing. I, I yeah. just know for- well, I mean, they have no bench. They have no yeah, bench, so I think they he will. They don't have no bench, but they're going to give Gordon Hayward a, the first series. They're going to see how he plays. I, I've watched yeah. They're going to see how he plays, and they'll be like, yeah, nah, I don't, he's not going to play too much. So maybe, maybe right. I'm just being yeah. biased. Maybe I'm just being biased, and I want him to my team. Oh. It is what it is. But I'm just saying, Miami's always injured. So if we're gonna, if you're gonna get opportunity, you could get opportunity in Miami. Yeah. Let's just be honest. So. Oh yeah, 100 agree. Uh, I'll give you guys mine, and I mean, I, I'm I'm gonna be totally out of left field here. Yep. Um, uh, there's some great likely names. You know, PJ Tucker is an obvious name, but I don't want PJ Tucker on this team. But there's a guy that I'm looking at, and I'll be like, why not? Danilo Gallinari, dude was just traded to Detroit. You know he's gonna get bought out. He played the other only five minutes, but look at these numbers in 26 games in 14 minutes a game. He's averaging seven points, three rebounds and three assists. He's averaging 31% from three in his career. He's 38%, but he's six foot 10, 240 pounds. That's another big player to give Spo to play with Bam, Kevin Love, possibly flip around that four rotation with Caleb Martin as well. Dude can hit shots. He can space the floor. He's a big body. He can rebound. He's not greatest defender, obviously, we know. But I think what he can bring 15 minutes a game, that's a guy in the buyout market. Because he can do, for us, what Kevin Love did last year. And like I said, that's bringing another big body, which in my opinion is someone we need. Something we need, excuse me. Yeah, I think he can help with spreading the floor, obviously. Maybe getting a little hot off the bench, playing what do you think, 10 minutes a game, 12 minutes a game, probably? 10, 15, yeah, because, you know, Bam plays like 40 minutes a game in the playoffs. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not bad. I don't know if it's going to move the needle necessarily like like a Kevin Love luckily has done for us just because he's a, he's on the wrong side of 30. He's 35, just coming off like that ACL. Like, he's literally, like, can't move. Like, that dude is in quicksand, you know? Like, he can't. He, well, seven he, points a game for 14 minutes. I don't think that's that bad. I think that's I think it's all right. I think it's it, like you said, he's not going to move the needle, but you know, he can give us some good games. I feel he's still capable. I'm sure he's still a bucket. He could probably get us like 10, 12 points every once in a while off the bench, depending on how many minutes he gets per game. But I mean, he's, he would be more of a reliable scorer than like a Jay Rich type of dude who's inconsistent or Haywood if he's coming off the bench because he was a former scorer who could average, you know, 18 points a game when healthy. Um, so not a, yeah not a, not a bad not a bad option I think I mean they're gonna gut that's another team right that's willing to drop players as well like is there any Wizards guys that come up um, I know I know uh, Ernest let's let's end on this you you talked about Kyle Kuzma's available um, I think it was two first round picks yeah, um, yeah. I, I like him I guess but I don't know. I don't think he's going to move the needle necessarily. I don't necessarily trust him in like as like our, our third or fourth best player. Like, look what he did with the Fakers. Granted, he was playing <laughs> behind LeBron James, you know, but like he was good when the kids were there before LeBron was there, right? With yeah, Ingram yeah. And, and Clarkson and Lonzo and Randall. Like, look at all those names the Lakers fucking traded, fucking idiots. But anyway, they got their fucking ship. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't, Kuz could be an awesome fit. I, I watched your video today. You guys should go check out Ernest's video. Uh, he talks about Kuz in there as well. Um, he could be a good fit next to Bam, but 
I, I just don't trust him necessarily. But I think the Wiz, you know, one of the worst teams, second worst record in the NBA. Yeah. Is there a player like a Monte Morris, former Nuggets point guard, that could be bought out? I think if he becomes like a bought out, a buyout or trade candidate, I think Monte Morris um, could be someone um, who is not really at, at all. We can look at that. He's young. That's another option. I mean, if you trade, if you trade Kyle Lowry for a Kyle Kuzma, for example, and then you have that hole in the point guard, then yeah, Monte Morris, maybe even a Patty Mills. I know people weren't really happy when I said that, but you're, you're if you're trading Kyle Lowry, it's because you understand the fact that you don't need a point guard on this team. We have so many ball handlers. Our center is a ball handler. So the fact that we really don't need it, uh, but it would be smart to pick up somebody, you know, a veteran point guard from the buyout who can give you 10 to 15 quality minutes off the bench, you know, but at this point, the way that we're playing, you know, I think it's definitely doable. And if you trade for a Kyle Kuzma, I don't think that's likely. I don't think the Heat are going to want to do it. But to touch bases about the whole knucklehead thing that he has, I don't care who the player is. If it's a, a player who can average 20 points a game, who can give you good quality minutes, if you put him in this Miami Heat system and culture, like my shirt says, we get guys at the right way. We turn bad, unknown players into quality role players, and we turn good players into great players. So I'll leave it at that. I, I, I say my last thing, too. I know Heat Nation, I'm one of them. Um, we're most likely not trading for a star. So these players that you may not like is probably the most realistic thing that we're probably going to touch at this trade deadline. We've seen it for the last off seasons, trade deadlines. We got too excited, too many people, too many stars went to the Heat Nation and we never got them. I gave up when we didn't land Dame. Just gave up right then and there and didn't expect no other big move after that. So a Gallinari, if we have to live with that, that's how we have to live with it because we can't we can't expect to land anything at this point until further notice. And with we'll all see. these players we just talked about, I might be on Ernest's side just saying as if, hoping that we're healthy, I think we might not even have to make a move. Honestly, like we might not even have to make a move as long as we're purely healthy healthy. And I'll leave it on this because we saw last night Jimmy missed basketball, right? He came back. He missed nine or ten games in a row, right? He's missed like 13 overall this year. He was engaged, you know, like maybe not for the first few minutes, but that guy scored 31 points on 12 shots. Like, yep. he got to, he got to, when he's getting to the free throw line, though, like you know he's engaged, right? Like he was in his bag. He was getting that lift, and he looked – when I saw that, it got me enthusiastic thinking about Ernest that like, when it when the lights are sh the brightest and Jimmy's healthy enough, like dude, that guy go can go to another level. So maybe we might not even need anybody at this point. But it maybe would be not. It would be frustrating. But to Ernest's point, I'm on your side. If it's a real upgrade and actually makes us a better with like a Dejounte, Terry Rozier, Spida, I'm in for it. You know. Yeah. Well, my thing's about to click out, you guys. <laughs> Perfect timing. <laughs> we'll stop there, guys. Thanks so much for joining us on another episode. We'll be back again uh, with another episode maybe later this week or early next week. So to the next episode, guys. Thanks for joining us. It was fun, guys. Thank you. Take care. Until next time, boy, Ernest out. Let's have a good one. That's enough said. <laughs>